This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're very pleased to be joined again by Dr. Anil Sharma, the CEO and the founder of GMS, to discuss trends in the ship recycling business. Dr. Sharma, to start, can you give us an overview of the ship recycling market as you see it today? Uh, thank you, Greg. First of all, thanks for having me here again. Uh, it's, it's good to see you, and I uh, hope uh, everyone is safe. Uh, ship recycling, where do I start? Um, let's start with, uh, with prices. Uh, because that's that's the news of the hour. I mean, uh, we are at about 70% of uh, record numbers in the ship recycling market. What I mean is 2008, uh, right before this big crash in global economy, uh, that's when the markets hit all time record highs. And in, in price of per ton basis, it was about $800 per ton. We are coming, we have reached almost 70% of that figure, which is, which but the peak, the highest ever in history of ship recycling, we are now second already. And so there is a lot of how to, you know, kind of uh, in the discussions in the market, you know, have we peaked or is there more room? Are we going to reach 2008? Are we going to surpass 2008? Or is our markets going to start regressing? And I think uh, for us in this business, uh, we ourselves are paying a lot of attention to various fundamentals to see, especially commodities, to see how the commodities are reacting. As you know, copper went to record high, and again, it fell down by about thousand, you know, dollars. We are looking at steel markets. So, uh, my personal view is, I think we are close to, if not at peak. Uh, but when I spoke with you about three months ago, I was uh, pretty much of the same opinion that we had the record numbers. Uh, we are about twenty percent higher since then. So it's. Uh, these markets are on a tear and totally unprecedented uh, in terms of prices. In terms of uh, facilities, uh, all markets, Turkey, China, I'm sorry, Turkey, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, the four major markets, all are doing very well, uh, are very active. Uh, uh, and so the capacity is also is quite well. So you know, it's very bullish right now, if I, I would say, in the shipping market, it's good times. Well, yes, uh, good times indeed, particularly if you own a container ship these days, uh, <laughs> that's for certain. So specifically then, um, what are you see, where are you seeing the most activity uh, by vessel type? I think the biggest activity we are seeing is in, in tankers. Uh, uh, you know, when we spoke earlier, tankers, there was not too much movement in that area. I see a lot of movements now coming in, in tankers. Uh, there is still some movement in offshore, still a lot of offshore uh, vessels coming in, uh, some dry bulk as well, believe it or not, uh, but these are the really old tonnage. We are talking about ships that are, you know, well past 25 years old uh, that are coming to the market. The VLOCs, I think when I spoke with you maybe three months ago, we saw the last of the VLOCs being scrapped. Uh, we are not going to see many of those come in. Uh, and to some extent, what I'm seeing is uh, we also have gone through the cruise ships. I'm not seeing too many more cruise ships come in, but gas is coming, especially LNGs. There are several vintage LNG carriers that are being scrapped right now. So if I would recap, it's primarily tankers, offshore, dry bulk, and gas. Um, these are the primary sectors that we see. No containers, as you said earlier. <laughs> we are not going to see containers for some time now. So again, I know you touched on it briefly in the, in the introduction, but the last time that we spoke, prices were at a historic high. Where yeah. are they today? Surpass that. So as I said, we are just year short of now 2008 peaks. Uh, you, know, uh, it, you know, these are cycles. Uh, when we spoke last, uh, Greg, in March, uh, the, after 2008, we had another 2011, when the prices had come close to where we were when we spoke in March. Again, we saw that in 2014, after three years. So you had 2008, three year gap, 2011, three years gap, 2014, and then prices never came back up. And so when we spoke in 2017, we were back to those numbers. So 2008, after that 11 and 14, but what we are seeing today, having gained another 20%, now we have surpassed 2011 and 14. And now we are at, you know, 
coming closer to that 2008 peaks, which, which to us as in, in the ship recycling business is quite scary and also exciting. Obviously, COVID continues to have a global impact on all industries, uh, though in some regions, particularly in New York, uh, where I sit, there is that light, that proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Can you give some insights on how COVID continues to impact shipwright recycling from two angles, logistically from getting crews and ships in place and from the perspective of the ship recycling yards themselves? Well, for us in the ship recycling is still uh, is not uh, good from that front uh, because taking your second question first from the ship recycling sector, as you know, India is going to, through tough times. Uh, Hopefully, the, at least the worst of the second wave seems to be over, uh, but still things are not very good. Uh, the flights still there is, uh, you know, freezing of flights. We cannot take any Indian crew out uh, or out of India. Uh, the, re the recycling markets are open, thankfully. Uh, recycling, you know, yards are open, thankfully. The workers are well protected, so we don't have too many incidents there. But from, from the perspective of, the Indian subcontinent, especially India, India, India suffered the really severe consequences. So that that's been said. Uh, the good news is, I mean, I think as just as recent as yesterday, the Indian government announced now free vaccines to to all citizens. So I think that's a very aggressive campaign. It it had record number of eight vaccinations. I think uh, eight million vaccination shots. And so I hope that is one way of coming back out out of this mess. From logistics perspective, uh, still the news is not positive. Uh, most we can still uh, change crew in Singapore. China is still under shutdown. I don't know if you're aware of this. It's still under pretty much all quarantines. Uh, we can fly, you know, uh, any crew in or out. If a ship has to go into dry dock, that's a real problem. We can send superintendents in there to supervise. So from that perspective, COVID is still has a very severe negative impact from both logistics and markets, uh, you know, perspective. Yes. Okay, well, again, Dr. Sharma, I, pr I truly do appreciate your insights. I look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, Greg, it was good to be here.